Hey everyone, this is Clausius, and today I'm going to go over another game, but uh, I'm going to focus on mainly uh, why my position was better than my opponent's, because my opponent was a 1Q, and he did what a lot of Qs do. Uh, he made um, a bunch of direction mistakes. Uh, a lot of Qs, especially single digit Qs, make this mistake because they see their opponent getting something and they immediately try to take it away. Today I'm going to show you um, how I dealt with that more or less. Uh, rem again remember, I mean I haven't been playing too well so I did win this game and I think it played decently well but I might not have responded perfectly. But the concepts that I want to point out are things that even single digit cues can profit from and if you are in the single digit cues learning how to respond to these and learning not to do these will help increase your gameplay. So I am white, my opponent's black. Um, I approached here. Another option is to play here. And then black has the choice of going here. Like this. Or you can play this, but normally he wants stone on the top, so he might decide to go here, here, then here, like this. And normally I like this kind of splitting idea. Uh, the reason I didn't, though, is because after this kind of exchange, um... I feel like black's position is just too good compared to white's. And in this game, I don't have Comey, so... And even if I did have Comey, I still don't usually don't like this kind of play and giving my opponent the position they want. So I guess technically, if black does this, I can pincer. Now I can try something like this. Black will go here. Uh, white will go here. Then black can play like this. And white can defend. Um, this is another option. But what uh, I don't like about this is, and black can respond here, or here, or here, depending on what he likes. Um, I think the most common is here to try and get Sente. But since black's so, um, so surrounded, I would probably like this type of move. Um, there's also this option, but what I don't like about this is, well, this is completely fine. This is, yeah, this is just another option. Uh, but in my mind, I was thinking, okay, white has his own, white has his own, black has his own, black has his own, black has a corner, and black's corner is bigger than anything white has so far, but white has Sente. So it's even. I mean, this is even, uh, if white has come anyway. But not, there's not really any big positions going on. So I wanted to try and change it up a little bit, because as white, I feel like I want to play faster, and I've been trying to push my game. So I push from this side. Black will start getting the right side, but I can also start developing the top. So if something like this plays out, black plays a big right side, I can play a big left and top side. And black's not any slower than white. Um, black may also try here. Oh, uh, then you can split. This is fine. Uh, or basically he can take Sentai. Maybe he wants to try something like this. And here. And white could go here. Or just split directly. Either way. Something like this. But white's also getting his own big position and threatening his own big position. And I tend to like faster play like this as white. I've been trying to uh, make my play go faster, if that makes sense. So I approach from this side of the game. And directionally, 
black wants to extend from the shimari somehow while also responding from this corner. So directionally, the right is really, really big. But black chose a pincer because black doesn't like white getting uh, a lot of points. Um, this is very common in the cues. They don't think about what they're getting very much. They think about what they're, they see what their opponent's trying to do and what their opponent's trying to get, and so they do everything they can to stop it, regardless of if it's good or not. They may have the bigger territory, and they'll still try to take away their opponents. So, even something as simple as this and split is a pretty okay choice, because black still has a big right side. Um, here, here, maybe a two-point jump, go to big center, and then it's a fight for the center. So maybe something like here. Or maybe you just want to approach. I'm going to try a pincer. Um, now I'm going to try and get a big center again. Anything. Just try getting your own stuff too. But his move's not bad. But the mindset, I think you need to think about what you're getting as well as what your opponent's getting. So... This move is a very subtle example. We'll see more obvious examples later, but this move theoretically isn't bad. But I do a pincer on a stone so I can try and get to the right side and make the right side uh, easier to deal with. Um, he touches this stone, so I hane. And we follow Joseki. Uh, I play here. I looked at up later. The Joseki's here for white, so this is my mistake. This is not the right move. Um, he plays here. I connect. And he plays here. Uh, when I looked it up, this was the move, but whatever. Uh, yeah, because there's this. There's still a cut available, and an ugly looking peep. Possibly. But now I activate the stone by playing on the right side and doing a wedge. Because now, even if I play on the left, the right side is much bigger. Because he, look at his thickness. If he gets to activate his thickness, this right side becomes obviously more bigger than white's. So now the wedge, wedge is proper. But I took black's corner and... I got to wedge, so now Black's thickness is not doing very much. So I think this was a poor Joseki choice for Black. Because if you look at what Black's trying to do, Black got thickness facing the right side, but it's not getting anything. So White got his corner, which was originally Black's corner, and Black didn't get anything in compensation. So already White looks better than Black. Black pushes from the Shimari. White plays here. Black does this to keep white weak. Um, now, I really want Sente to go over here. But it's bad style to just leave your two stones like this with a black stone on both sides. Because black can really push those two stones. So I wanted to try and settle myself in Sente if I can. Normally the move is something like this. But it looks like black's corner is becoming very big. And I kind of still want one more move to be completely safe because there's a peep right here for black. So I decided to do something different. I played this move. This move is a type of sacrifice play to make shape, but I'm not sure if, again, it's the best way to do it. But that was my idea. So I sacrifice the stone, get this Atari, black and X. Taking the stone's not good because this Atari um, is too good for white. Um, you may say black and try and fight this coat, but this is such an easy coat for white. This is black's position. Black doesn't want to coat in his own position. It's just a bad coat for black. So black will connect, and white connects, and white shape obviously looks better than 
what it should have been. So black connects here, then white Atari's here. And here, uh, I think black can possibly think about Tanuki. And Tanuki means to play away from the local situation, for those who don't know. Um, black can consider it, I guess. But taking's fine also. It keeps white weak. And I did have to worry about that group later. Uh, I still want one more move. But I also really wanted Sente. So I take Sente. But normally you do want to defend yourself before playing elsewhere. So usually this would be the proper way to play, or Honte, which means proper, to fix yourself before playing elsewhere. So probably I should do this, and even if Flight plays a wedge, I should still be okay. But I've been trying to be faster, so I play faster. My thinking is, even if Black does a peep here, or here, White's not going to die, and I don't think Black's going to gain very much from attacking this group right now. So, and White also has stuff like this. And I think maybe I could have done this. He plays like this. Here, here. Maybe I could have done this before Tinukiing, but either way, I'm just giving myself more stones to have to worry about, and I usually don't like doing that. But, uh, yeah, that's my reasoning for playing here. Um, I'm still not sure if it's proper or not, or if it's good enough, good enough or not. But that was my thinking. Um, so he plays here because of this cut. He wants to make sure that it's completely killed. Uh, I think this move is just too weak, though. Because now White's going to get another free move. So I think if you want to defend the two stones, approaching like this, and maybe peeping this corner, would be a better way to fix the cut. And then maybe coming down here or something. Because now the cut's completely pointless because Black's pretty much alive on top. Um, there is this issue. But I'm not sure how bad black shape is. I mean, I guess black still wants a move, so maybe black will go here. But this is all because he originally played this move instead of this move. So yeah, um, it's just bad feeling to play this move. I don't think black should have to play it. I think black needs to think of another way to do this. Because this is just far too slow. He didn't. He got like two or three points out of it. Um. So I just take a big move. Uh. Here. I'm assuming Black's looking at the center to try and peep this group. Because. Uh. It is weak and. Uh, White got a big move, so Black does want to take profit from attacking that group somehow. That's the thinking anyway, so that's why Black played here, I believe. I played here to keep the bottom from becoming too big. And then Black invades. Uh, this is alright, so far. Because White's left side is becoming pretty big, and Black doesn't... Black isn't sure where his profit is yet. But I think... He shouldn't have played this. He shouldn't have played this first. If he wants to come in, he should just come in directly. That way, he didn't hurt. Have one hurt stone on the outside. So I think this is a bad style to do the shoulder hit and then invade. He should just invade directly. So that way, he doesn't have one stone that's just there, not doing anything, and just looks hurt. I guess. Uh, you don't want to have a useless stone on the board. So I played this variation to seal black in the corner. The Joseki is here, 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 here. Black and Tanuki and it's a cow, or black and just live. This is the Joseki, but he got greedy. He thought white side is becoming too big, so he decided to come out. This, is, I was told, or I was taught, 
that this is move is actually a mistake because now I play in the corner like this. Black has no eye shape. Black's just weak inside of all the white stones. It's just not a good way to play. That's why this move was considered a good Joseki to seal black in the corner. But either black didn't know that or black didn't care. Probably black just didn't know it or didn't think about it. And he just wanted to take white's territory. But now he starts noticing that white's going to start attacking him pretty hardcore. So now he tries to play something like this. And this is where a lot of players will start falling apart because they're not sure how to deal with this really reckless overplay. Um, what I did is try to keep calm, try to think what can I afford to lose, what can I not afford to lose, uh, keep an idea of the points. I Even at this step, I've still been counting the points. Black has 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 points on this corner alone. He has about four or five points in this corner. And what has, theoretically, I usually like to think of this stone as 10 points. Uh, nine points in this corner, two or three points, if not four points with this group, and six, seven points down here. White is ahead. So all I have to do is keep black weak and just calmly take my profit and make sure I don't die or make uh, a mistake anywhere. So I considered playing a move like this, but if I try stuff like this, it starts looking like black center is becoming pretty big, and I just lost my top left position. This cornerstone now looks kind of weak, so I need to defend it. And now black can start aiming at stuff in the center. Something like this. And now it kind of feels like black's controlling the flow of the game. So I didn't like something like that. That's why I ruled it out. Uh, that's the kind of things you need to think about. Um, what you also want to notice is uh, I usually spend a lot of time in my games reading. This is something I think most players on KGS sorely lack, is they play way too quickly and don't c consider their moves. And I think if you would have just, if you can calmly stop yourself and think about the position and just read out the situation and just judge accurately, and that's what your clock time's for, is to read at times like these. Um, if you can do that, I think you'll be able to deal with these positions a lot easier. I think a lot of people just get really confused and play way too quickly at points like this. But um, I say that, but normally I do run into a lot of time trouble near the last third to end of the last third or fourth of the game. I'm usually in Bioyomi almost every single time, which is the overtime countdown. So yeah, I have like 30 seconds to make a move. And usually I have a good bit of time trouble. Um, that's because I spend a lot of time thinking and reading very far in my games. And I think that's good practice. But I'm still working on that happy medium to be able to balance a 30 minute to 40 minute game to where I can make that stretch through most of the games. That way I'm only in like late, or I'm only in the Yose when I'm in Bio Yomi. And Yose usually, um, usually Yose is decently easy, more or less, to do in 30 seconds versus running into Bio Yomi during the last third of the game where there's still a little bit going on that you need to read. Um, usually where I shine, though, is in 60 to 90 minute games, I do very well. Uh, and a lot of people that play very quickly on KGS just don't because they don't have the ability or practice to read the amount you can read in a 60 to 90 minute game. Um, so I think a lot of players should practice this. Play 30 minute games. They're not super, super long. I will say it takes a good deal more effort, but if you can... Uh, if you have the ability to read 
very accurately and very calmly in difficult situations, it'll just make your game so much more better. Maybe play, uh, if you play three very fast games, maybe play one very slow game or one 30 minute game and try taking your time and reading. You won't get as many games in, but I guarantee you your reading and your judgment will improve tons from that one game compared to those three games. Um, on the flip side though, if you play a lot of thinking games and you think a lot and you do really well at that part, but you find yourself in Bioyomi or Overtime way too quickly, like maybe in about at a move, uh, around move 70 to 100, you're already in Bioyomi, then you probably need to learn how to time manage better. Um, don't worry, um, I feel you. That's the same issue I'm running into now. Um, I've been trying to manage that a lot quicker. But rather than just trying to add more clock time or something like that, you also need to be able to think accurately and quickly in Bioyomi in the second half of the game, because if you do run into that little problem, you need to still be able to think quickly and accurately within that 30 seconds. Okay, so moving along back to the game, the move I came up with was actually not to respond to the touching move. Because my thinking is, he touched me, yes, and normally you want to respond to the touching move. But he ignored the two stones that I'm attacking. So since he ignored me, I should theoretically be able to ignore him, and normally when you try to help weak stones, I usually tell my students, don't try to help your weak stones with, move, with moves that get cut off from your weak stones, unless you're trying to sabaki or something like that. Uh, but that's a different strategy. Um, this might look like a sabaki, which means to play very lightly and loosely and be willing to give up some stuff to get out quickly. But it's actually not. This is creating a second weak stone for him. A second weak group. So, I think my move here is pretty well. Or, I think this move uh, responds pretty well to his. Uh, he, of course, tries to take his profit by attacking this. Um, I could completely kill the corner, but then my entire position on the left falls. So, I do need to respond now. So keeping track, how much is this these two stones worth compared to this side? How much can you give up to compared to what you're getting? You, you need to constantly have that balance. So I respond like this. This is what I read when I first played this move. So I didn't... I took like four seconds to play this move because I already knew this response was coming. And now he runs out. Uh, this is a creative way to run out because if I try to do something like this, He'll try to connect to those stones, so I need to cut. He goes here. And if I try to do this, now these two stones are coming into play. Now it's... Uh, I'm unsure what's... how this is going to play out. Now I might just make life. And I have thickness, but there's a bunch of black stones in my thickness, and what's it facing? Not much. My focus is on the left side. This is bad direction to play. So... When he plays this, I can't cut the stone off. I can try and go here, but then there's this variation. And that's annoying. So, this is a good move to get out. But I'm prepared. I just slowly walk out. And I try to keep myself strong, not too weak, while also keeping both of his groups weak. He now has two weak groups to worry about, and it's got to be annoying for him. And White's left side is looking pretty darn good. Um, so here, I'm assuming he's making shape. I'm not sure how useful that was, though. It's probably okay. Uh, it may look like here that now this doesn't work. But if I try to do something like this, might go here. I go here. Maybe he wants to go here. No. Okay. Um, the idea here is he can probably get this in Sentai. Or if I try to do something like this here, here, here. Now I have to deal with 
the odd gene in the corner. So if I try to kill him, there's this problem. Try and go here. Like, already has something like this. Plus, he kind of has this kind of stuff. Uh, it, it was just annoying Aji, and I probably can kill him, it looks like. It looks like I can kill him. But that's pretty risky, and I have to kill him or my position's destroyed. And I'm not sure if I really want to take that risk. But I think Black's move, taking away that liberty, is a mistake because it gave White that option to cut. So I think that move, this move is a mistake for Black. Um, but I didn't cut because, yeah, I was worried about how accurate uh, that killing, that kill stuff was. It's normally very hard to kill stuff just straight up. And I think this was fine. And now, I killed these two stuns. So again, um, he tries to come in. Probably a little greedy, because this is really strong. He's trying to activate these two stones as Aji to come in and destroy White's position. But this entire game, he's focused on stopping White. Why not try and do your own thing? For example, you can build the top like this. Um, your group's not alive on the bottom. But you have something like this, so maybe you can start building the bottom. Why does something like this? Um, the bottom's starting to look pretty good. Uh, maybe not that. Maybe this idea, and then build the top. Just try and build your own positions. I mean, this is not the exact moves I would probably think of, though. Like, black maybe try something like this. Be better. Push white, and then build the bottom. But, anyway, the idea is, why do, black never can... It looks like black didn't even consider building his own position at all. He just kept trying to take mine. And I don't think that's... It's just a bad style of playing. And many cues do this. So, I keep him weak, and I attack him, and I just take points on the top. The same amount of points on the top, if not more, that I lost on the left with what he was trying to do. Um, but now the two stones, Aji starts coming into play. And he runs out. Uh, but he's still weak right here, so white should be fine. And he's weak right here. But I just decide to connect my stones. This might be a mistake, though. Because once black does something like this, this center is starting to look pretty nice for black. Especially since he has these type of moves. Remember, like I said, I think that's why White should have defended himself way early on, so he never, didn't have to worry about this stuff. Because you see how many times I've tried to activate the weakness here and to attack White, all because I ignored that one move. So I'm still not sure if that move was worth it or not. I did take control of the left, so I'm, I'm really not sure. But yeah, Black can try stuff in the center, but instead, Black just played here. So, I fixed. I'm still not, he, I'm not sure why he tried, why he did that. And he tries to take my points again. Just, he constantly tries to take anything that I get. Uh, it can be very annoying, but as long as I stay calm and respond correctly, I should be okay. Uh, normally, you want to keep your opponent cut if they're weak on the outside, but how valuable are these two stones. I decided not very, I think, playing this variation is good enough, and black's still not alive after this variation. See, white kept some points, kept his base, white's alive over here, and black's still not alive. Now, I say that I've been trying, that's my reasoning for all of these moves on the left, but if we look at the whole position now, how much did white gain from all this attack? It looks like black's reduction was actually a success. Because white only has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 points in the corner. That's what I assumed. 
over here, White's Middle Stone, gain two, four, five, six, seven points. And White's Corner down here is seven or eight points. And I probably like nine points. So, I think my playing on the left, it looks like a deflected blocks attacks, but once you take the whole position, this is where you have to, when you review games, you have to analyze how much should I really gain from this attack. So it looks like white made a mistake and didn't gain enough profit. Although, if we look at the whole scale, black sells one, two, three, three weak groups. So I still have a chance to make my profit. But this is what you need to look at when you start thinking, did I play correctly in this area? Um, so I try to take the bottom. So I'll, this is where I want to try and take my profit. Like this here. Uh, yeah, I cut. Place here. And then I take my points on the bottom. But then black plays here and connects both of these two weak groups. So I'm not sure if I should have played something like this to keep black weak and cut. Probably. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. This is pretty hard. Uh, there's a lot to think about here. I mean, technically, I got my profit. I got another 9 to 10 points on the bottom for free. Black got nothing in the exchange. He did save his weak group, so. And this center is starting to look pretty good for him, but White has Sente. And I th White's still ahead, so I can't say my attack completely failed. I think it could have been better, though. So I play here to get some stones in the center so that center doesn't look so big. Uh, you go center. And now we try to take the center. So I keep a scoop weak. And I make points on the top, I'll reduce in the center. And all of a sudden that center looks is starting to look smaller and smaller. Oh, now the weakness comes into play. I play here because playing here is just too submissive. Uh, here he goes again, trying to make sure I don't get anything. Um, now if we look here, look at, look at what Black can gain here. Black's still losing, don't get me wrong. Black's still a, a good deal behind. But, Black can start trying to come back by making points in the center here. Um, that's why I think my attacks could have been better. But now Black's starting to do some funny stuff, and so White's going to start responding. And White's completely alive, and this center's gone. He did get a little bit of a center here, but it's still reducible and there's still Aji. As you will see now. Look at that. Bam. And this Hane is just annoying. So I save the two stones. What a black gain in this area. Absolutely nothing. If anything, white gains the points. So that this this peep slash attack kind of failed for black. Uh, now it goes here. I play here to try and get under this area. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Black place here, uh, as you can see, I'm in Bayoyomi. I've used up a lot of time. Um, I would prefer to have probably another three minutes like he does at this point, and maybe go into Bayoyomi, uh, maybe 10 or 20 moves later. Even 10 moves later. To start Bayoyomi 10 moves later than this would be easier to deal with. But now, um, trying to read in the game in 30 seconds.
I knew it could kill the three stones. But I also wanted to consider. Um, yeah, I probably should have cut. Because he's just too weak right here. But I was look at thinking, how many points is this worth? And how many points is he going to get in Sente on the outside? Versus if I just give up a couple points here, how many points can I take away? Uh, for example, we play this out like this. I play here. Now he has to block, and I get Sente. The other one, see, it was like this. See, I was thinking he's going to get a lot of forcing moves on the outside. Mm, it looks like my reading was not the greatest here. But my thinking was, he will get to block all of these points in Sente. But it looks like I misread. So that happens. But better to be safe than sorry, right? Uh, I say that, but this is a good, like, six points <laughs> that I lost. Um, six points is a good deal, especially in the higher levels. Six points is a good bit. But, yeah, these things happen. Go here, create some Maji, take the stone and Sente. I don't think I can say this. Yeah, I can't say that. Okay, just checking. Um, now I proceed with Yosei. Reduce his points. And here is where my annoyingly, annoyingly, annoyingly lack of play lately has been starts coming to play. Um, maybe it's just lack of focus or lack of practice. I don't know what it is, but for some reason I just didn't notice that I was starting to lose my eyes. And I just uh, was thinking this was a normal Yosei move, so respond like Yosei, but I should have noticed that I was starting to die here. But I didn't, and I just play a normal Yosei move, and then all of a sudden I start dying. Um, it's such an easy response to just play here. I'm winning. There's no reason to take any risk. You can even just go here, here, and move like this. I'm going to play here. I'll play. No, I don't even need to play there. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. I can play here. I can live so easily and continue with Yosei. Um, don't worry about the corner. No, not really. It's going to do go here. Uh, I suppose you can do that. I can still make life on the top. <clears throat> Worst case, I just play here. He tries to kill me. Here, here. Is that Sente? Oh. Here. 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 Wants to take the stones? Well, I guess I do this. Uh oh. Yeah, I just need a move though. Okay, so maybe that's not the good move. Either way, I should have just noticed I was dying. Let me just play this directly. I should have noticed and played something. And that's usually what's been costing me several games. That's why I felt a wand on. Because I just completely miss obvious stuff like this. And I don't know how to fix that. Uh, but I'm working on it. Going through a slump. 
I better go see this. Uh, but yeah, I live. Fix. He kills the four stones. And I lose about 14, 15 points. That's a lot. The funny thing is, I still won this game. <laughs> By a good deal. Uh, he gets scared here. So yeah, um... Oh, yeah, that's why I won this game. Because he missed this. This is actually pretty obvious. Uh, he was thinking his whole group's in trouble. So he has to save. And then he plays something, he's like, oh, I can cut off this stone. And I'm thinking, no, you can't. He goes, yes, I can. And I said, no, you can't. He goes, oh. Yeah. See? I killed these stones back. He got some compensation, but still not enough. Because I can reduce this. And then he tries to block the center for you know, apparent reason when I can do this. So his this whole profit thing just plummeted. I got more than I just lost. So he made a mistake just right back. Um, but yeah, so now we're both in Bayomi. The rest is Yose. And, yeah, so I'm ahead by a good deal, but then I got this secret little, <laughs> And he resigned. Uh, resigned proper. Uh, White's far ahead. But yeah, um, I've got to get over my little not noticing weakness right now. I'm going to have to work pretty hard to get over that. Um, but yeah, that's, I thought this game was interesting just because you get to see what many cues try to do and when they shouldn't, and what many cues will actually fall apart to, because it's really aggravating to have to deal with someone coming in your territory all the time, but at the same time, as long as you calmly, or as long as you stay calm, respond strongly, respond correctly, or to the best of your ability, you usually will win. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, that's basically it. You should try and get your own stuff. Uh, don't be afraid of your opponent coming in, because as you saw, he had like three weak groups. Uh, I could use a little bit more practice punishing, but they're not good. It's actually, They're bad moves. And if you want to get out of the queues, you're going to have to stop playing those bad moves, because eventually... Uh, your bad moves may get you to one Q, one Don, maybe. But eventually you're going to run into opponents that know how to respond to this and will punish your overplays. And then you're going to be stuck because all of your moves are focused on taking your opponent's territory. Your entire strategy is based on that. And you don't know how to make your own. So once your opponent knows how to counter it, you have no way of winning your games anymore. So you're going to have to eventually learn how to build your own territory, and whoever can build faster will win, not whoever can take away and your opponent's territory, confuse them enough, and just win by terrorizing them. Uh, that only gets you so far. But yeah, um, that's basically what I wanted to say for this. Um, I still made a lot of mistakes too, as you saw. So... I don't have much room to talk, but I'm trying to point it out so people will actually start noticing it in their game so they can start working on it too. That way they can start improving their game just like I am. Uh, my game's not perfect, but it's getting there. And I hope your game can improve lots too, and I hope this helps point out some of the weaknesses you've been making, and, maybe you can, and hopefully you will improve from this. But yeah, uh, thanks... For watching i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you next time bye bye